Readers and welcome to Read and Succeed. This is Prabhjot Singh Nanda and today we will be reading one more part of Nelly Netgrad, the double best reporter in history. Breaking news, book number six, part three of three. Written by Tom Angerberger and illustrated by Gillian Raid. So without any further ado, let us begin. Chapter 6. Just then, Sakajiva rode up on a motorcycle. Hey Nelly, she said, why are you jumping up and down and yelling about underwear? And why do you smell like bean dip? Asked Sakajiva's baby, Jean Baptiste, who was strapped to her back. It's a long story, said Nelly, but what I want to hear is your story. Did you get Lewis and Clark to the Pacific Ocean? No said Sakajeva. What? Why not? We were about a mile from the ocean when Lewis and Clark heard Morse was releasing the new eye telegraph today. So they went to go stand in the line to get one. Great googly moogly, yelled Nelly. That means hotshot Trubowski won't have a front page story for tomorrow. But I will. You will? Asked Jean Baptiste. What is it? The story about how the new I telegraph went on sale. And how can you get that story if you're standing here talking to us right now? Nellie shouted to answer, but her mouth just fell open. No sound came out, but inside her hair, her brain was yelling. This is an outrage! This was Nellie's own fault. She realized if she had listened to Brian, the editor, she'd be getting the story right now. She couldn't blame this on anyone else. But like I've told you before, Nelly is pretty smart. She told her brain to stop yelling and start thinking. And it told her to ask Sikajiva for a ride. Can you please take me to the eye telegraph store? Asked Nelly. I've got to get there in an hour. Sorry, but it's almost rush hour, said Sakajiva. The traffic is going to be terrible. Only a stampeding herd of buffalo could get you there one time. Oh, look. Here comes one now, said Jean Baptista. The baby pointed to the stampeding herd of buffalo that was thundering past. They disappeared over the prairie in seconds, leaving only a cloud of dust behind them. But they already passed us, groaned Nelly. This is an out. Stop complaining in Japan, shouted Sakajiva. Nelly jumped on the back of the motorcycle. Just as Sakajiva gunned the engine and zoomed off in a hot pursuit of the buffalo. Here's a spare helmet, said Jean Baptista. You better put it on. You must have a fascinating story to tell, said Nelly as she put on the helmet. Can I interview you for the newspaper and take a photo? Sure, said Jean ba Baptista. Just let me put on my baby bonnet. Baby born on a cross-country trip demands chicken nuggets. Jean Baptista. The son of famed wilderness, boy, wilderness guide, Sakajiva is not happy with the number of chicken nuggets available in the wilderness. I've traveled thousands of miles without eating a single chicken nugget, complained the child who was born during Lewis and Clark's famous expedition. There's not a single restaurant that serves chicken nuggets west of the Mississippi River. Jean Baptista dreams of a day when kids will have a chance to eat chicken nuggets wherever they go and choose from at least four different dipping sauces. As Nelly finished her interview with Jean Baptista, Sakajiva caught up to the buffalo. Excuse me, where are you stampeding to? Nelly asked one buffalo. So children, what do you think? Would Nelly continue on going on the motorcycle or would she get on the buffalo? So I'll give you one minute to think about it and then we will read forward. I hope you have thought. Now let's move forward. To the iTelegraph store, he said. The new one is out today. May I get a ride? Asked Nelly. Sure, said the buffalo. Nelly jumped off the motorcycle and onto the buffalo's back. 
Good luck with your story, called Sakajeva and Jean Baptista, as you sped away to the nearest chicken nugget restaurant. So children, we finally found out that Nally Nutcrab, she wanted a big first page story for Big City Big News. And she went and she found Shakajiva and Jean Baptista in the way while she was there. And she thought, and they gave her the idea to maybe go to the iTelegraph store where the new iTelegraph had been launched. However, she thought that she was too late. That's why she asked Sakajiva for a ride. But, Sakari, but Sakajiva and Jean Baptista wanted to get chicken nuggets. So Nelly saw a stampeding herd of buffaloes. And then she jumped on one. Nelly was stampeding towards the eye telegraph store on the back of a buffalo. Did I mention that before Nelly became a reporter, she was a champion bull rider? Compared to a bull riding a buffalo is easy. Plus their backs are kind of furry and snuggly. Hello, I'm Nelly Nutgraf with the Big City Big News. Nelly said to the buffalo, Hi, I'm Regnigal with the thundering herd of bison. Bison? I thought you were a buffalo, exclaimed Nelly. Well said, Regnigal. A lot of people call us buffalo, but the truth is we are American bison. Wow, said Nelly. I'm glad you told me off. If I had that mistake in my story, I would have to write a correction tomorrow. You mean you're going to mention us in your story? Of course, said Nelly. In fact, just let me go at it and take a photo. Just let us put our hats on, yelled the thundering herd. Click. Bison. The vast herd of bison. So children, what is the meaning of bison? Let us get to know. Bison. Bison, bison is any of several large shaggy mane mammals related to ox with a large head, short horns and a large fleshy hump above their shoulders, especially buffalo. So these bisons, they look like buffaloes, but they're not buffaloes. They have a large shaggy mane and they're related to an ox. They have short horns and large fleshy humps. And left turn at the Grand Canyon and merge into the expressway. They stomped over the Golden Great Bridge into San Francisco. Sakajiva had been right. The traffic was awful, but the bison just stampeded over anything that got in the way. Then they all got in cable cars and rode up the hill to the Morris Company I Telegraph store. It was 4.59. Nelly had made it. It was a wild scene in front of the store. People were pushing and showing each other trying to get to the front of the line. Samuel Morris was yelling at everybody to settle down, but they wouldn't. However, everybody listened when they heard the thundering hoops of the stampeding herd. Nellie jumped off Reginald's back when she saw Lewis and Cluck. She tried to interview them, but they were in the middle of a fight with Thomas Jefferson. What are you doing here, yelled Thomas Jefferson. I sent you out to explore the Louisiana Purchase, but not but in front of me in the line. We didn't but in the line, said Clark. King George III was saving our place. No fair, yelled Thomas Jefferson as he was so mad that he stomped off to write the Declaration of Independence. I'm glad he left, said Susan B. Anthony. He kept stepping, stepping on my foot. Mine too, said Linda, the Bigfoot, but I do have another big feet. He's not as bad as George Washington, said Willie Mays. The guy dropped a big greasy sandwich on my brand new uniform. Do I smell bean dip? asked Betsy Rose. I just want to know when this line is going to start moving, said Paul Robert. I've got to get to Boston by midnight. Nellie wrote down lots of quotes and took lots of pictures of famous people, bison, horses, and even Clark's dog. Woof, said Clark's dog, and you can quote me on that. Now this is going to be a huge front page story, thought Nellie, with a big smile. Chapter 8. Meanwhile, on the rocky Pacific shore in Oregon, Hotshot Trubelsky was still waiting for Lewis and Clark to show up. 
This is an outrage, he yelled, but no one was there to hear him. Chapter 9. Vagano came running out of the eye telegraph store. I got it! I got the very first eye telegraph 22 and a half. Wow, he's one lucky buffalo, said Lewis. You mean bison, said Clop. Da di da di da di da. I'm getting a massage, yelled Ragnarok. Di da di da di da di da. It's for you, said Ragnarok to Nelly. I wonder who it's from. It was from me. Bob Bunyan. The story took so long to carve out on the ice that spring made the ice melted, and I fell into the lake. And I can't swim. Luckily, I'm really tall, so it takes me a long time to sink. Nelly jumped on Ragnarok and they thundered all the way up here. Just my beard was getting wet. Nelly made a lasso out of typewriter ribbon and threw it around one of my big ears. Then she Ragnarok and my ox babe pulled me to shore. Thanks, Nelly, I called, but she was already on her way to the newspaper office. The following day, we read all about it on the front page of the big city, Big News. There wasn't an underwear ad inside. So, children, Nellie had finally got that article on Big City, Big News' first page. Human bison herds collide to create new eye telegraph sales record by Nellie Nutgrab. And by this, our breaking news series of Nelly Nutgraff finishes. Stay tuned with me to start the Big Scoop series of book number seven, Nelly Nutgraff, part one of three. So, everybody have a nice day. Bye, 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 bye.